how do we define a textual variant? What constitutes a textual variant as far as textual criticism is concerned? That is, scholars determine how many numbers of variants we have among the manuscripts, and it's important to know what actually is a variant. A textual variant is any place in the wording of the text where there is a difference. Now, what this does not count is capitalization or punctuation because the ancient manuscripts would not have had a distinction between the capitalized words and the non-capitalized words and they didn't use any punctuation. So as far as the original text is concerned, neither capitalization nor punctuation are important. However, what is important is the wording, the word order, and even the spelling of words, and those all count as textual variants. There are essentially five types of textual variants that scholars uh, would recognize when it comes to the New Testament. The first is what's called an omission. That is, if you look at a particular text and you compare it to a manuscript and that manuscript lacks a word or more than one word, that would be called an omission. Another kind, just the opposite of this, is an addition. So you've got this manuscript that differs from the text that you're comparing it to, and it adds a word or more than one word. That's called an addition. What's the size of omissions and additions? Well, the smallest, by definition, would be a single word. The largest is as much as 12 verses. And we have two places in the New Testament where 12 whole verses were either added to the text or were deleted from the text. It certainly cannot be, in either of these places, considered to be an unintentional change because two scribes in different parts of the ancient world could not possibly have come up with exactly the same wording for 12 verses. So there must be some kind of a genetic or genealogical connection, uh, connection among these manuscripts going back very early. The two places are John 7, 53 through 8, 11, the story of the woman caught in adultery, and we've discussed that in an earlier lesson. And the other place is Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 20. Those 12 verses are found in the majority of manuscripts, but our two earliest manuscripts lack them, and we'll talk about that in a later lecture. Apart from those two places of 12 verses, the next largest textual variant that is found in English translation, in other words, the, the kind of variant that uh, most students of the Bible through translation know about, is only two verses long. And then we have uh, some that are one verse. So we've only got a couple dozen or so that are one or two verses, two places where it's 12 verses. And then we've got, after that, phrases and clauses and all the way down to individual words. And that number is in the tens of thousands, if not more, of omissions or additions at that stage. Besides omissions and additions, there are three other kinds of textual variants. One is a transposition, and this has to do with the word order change, where a word order can change in terms of just two words where it's Jesus Christ versus Christ Jesus, and that's a typical textual variant we see in Paul's letters. Did he write Jesus Christ or did he write Christ Jesus? Those words are transposed very frequently among the manuscripts. Transpositions can also involve a number of larger uh, issues, and one manuscript, Codex Bezai, that's at Cambridge University, transposes at times as many as nine or 10 words, so the order gets uh, in a different sequence it makes sense, but that probably tells us that this scribe is copying out a text where he's grabbing whole bites at a time, large bitefuls at a time, and writing out what he thinks it should say. And uh, that's why this manuscript is probably the most bizarre manuscript among our New Testament texts in that it changes the text more than any other manuscript out there. Now, besides omission, addition, and transposition, we have substitution is the fourth kind of a textual variant. Substitution is simply the substitution of one word for another word. So in John 4, 1, when Jesus knew or when the Lord knew. Is it Jesus or is it the Lord? That's a substitution. Those are the kinds of things we have as well. And when it comes to uh, these textual variants, sometimes you can get a combination where you can have a transposition of four or five words, but where you have an omission in another variant, or you have an addition, to, uh, addition in another variant after that. Or you might have these four or five words that are transposed, and there's a couple of substitutions in there. Each of those has to be treated as a discrete textual variant. 
Finally, there's what we might call a total rewrite, where the text is so different in one manuscript than what it is in another that we just give up and say we can't classify this by transposition and omission and substitution. It has to be just a total rewriting of the text. And again, it's Codex Bezae or Contrabrigansis at Cambridge that leads the charge in having total rewrites of the text.